In this video, I want to teach you about two-way analysis of variance. Two-way analysis of variance generalizes upon one-way analysis of variance by simply adding a second factor. And in two-way analysis of variance, what we want to determine is if either factor has an effect on the response. Now note that these two factors can have a number of levels, and in fact, different number of levels. For example, the first factor might take on three levels, and the second factor could take on a different number, say, five levels. We also want to determine if the effects of these factors are additive, or if there is a non-linearity, which is called an interaction. So the effects are uh, additive if the effect of changing factor 1 from level 1 to level 2 uh, and at the same time changing factor 2 from level 1 to level 2. The effect of that on the response y is just the sum of the two individual effects. Now in Six Sigma we've often talked about y is equal to f of x and doing things like identifying the critical x's that uh, control an output. And you also know that we have generalized this a little bit to add random errors. So we oftentimes think that y is a function of x plus random errors. Now this way of thinking parallels the way we often think in statistics. In statistics, we often think about decomposing data into a fit plus residuals. In two-way analysis of variance, the fit has a very specific form. Specifically, the fit is an overall mean plus the effect due to factor 1. And by effect here, I mean how factor 1 changes things from the overall mean, plus an effect due to factor 2, plus any leftover nonlinearity that's not described by simply the additive effects of factor 1 and factor 2. Now, the terminology I just used in the previous slide is not the uh, correct or typical terminology associated with uh, ANOVA. So let me restate it using analysis of variances usual terminology. Once again, the data is decomposed into a fit plus a residual. And the fit consists of a grand mean plus the factor 1 main effect plus the factor 2 main effect plus an interaction between factor 1 and factor 2. Now I'm going to show you how analysis of variance works in a similar way to the way I described uh, uh, one-way analysis of variance. And I think it's very simple and we're going to do it in Excel. But in order for you to appreciate how simple that approach is, I wanted you to quickly look at the kinds of formulas that you're going to find in a typical statistics textbook associated with, uh, with two-way analysis of variance. For example, there would be formulas for the sum of squares for the first factor, the first main effect. And they're going to be things like b, the number of levels of factor 2, times n, the number of replicates, times the mean with this funny uh, uh, index and dot notation, which means you average over the index where the dot is. Uh, and there's a similar formula for factor 2, and then another one for the interactions, and then another one for the residuals, and finally for the total. And I can't remember all of this stuff, and it, frankly, it never really did connect with me uh, when I was learning this uh, originally. So instead of trying to present all of these formulas, I think there is a much easier and simpler way to think about things, which I'm now going to show you in Excel. So I have already opened a file that's called two-way ANOVA photoresist example um, annotated.xlsx. And uh, the, before we get into it, I just want to show you that in the very last tab of this file, I have annotated in very detailed way all of the calculations that I'm about to show you. So you can take a look through that annotation uh, if you get lost at all. 
So in this example, we're thinking about manufacturing circuit boards. And there is an adhesive involved with applying the photoresist that is affected by two factors, temperature and pressure. Now before I get into this, I want to note that for a two-way analysis of variance, unlike for a one-way analysis of variance, the design has to be balanced, which means that for each combination of the factor levels, there have to be the same number of replicates. In this particular case, there are five replicates. So, for example, uh, when we have factor for the factor for temperature, factor one equal to the high level, um, and factor two, the pressure equal to the high level, we have five observations that were taken when both of those factors were at the high level. Similarly, for all of the other combinations. For the temperature at level 2 and the pressure at level 3, we again have five observations. Now, um, we have all of the combinations here in this data table. So we have all of the response, uh, responses that we got. And then we have listed the various combinations of the factors. So you can see that the temperature factor takes on values of 3, 2, and 1. The pressure factor also takes on values, you can see 3 in the beginning of 2 here, and then it eventually switches to 1 as well, while the first factor goes back through 3, 2, and 1. So uh, that's how the factor levels are changing. And now I'm going to show you how to uh, decompose this data. And, and the way we avoid all the complexity of the formulas on the slide that I showed you before is to think about this entirely as decomposing every single observation. So I'm going to go ahead and split the screen. And the first thing I'm going to do in my decomposition is just copy the values uh, for the response variable uh, over from my data table. So I'll just go ahead and put an equal sign in and uh, grab the corresponding value. And now I can copy it with control C and then paste it with control V. So my column here labeled Y is just exactly the same data as before. Now the first part of the dump decomposition is to compute a grand mean. And the grand mean is just the average of all of the Y data. So let me go ahead and put that in. It's average, and then I'm going to select the entire column of the Y data. And now I'm going to hit F4 because I want to copy this formula down next to every observation of the data. So F4 will put the dollar signs in front of both the columns and the row numbers uh, to make it an absolute reference. And now I can just copy that grand mean down uh, next to the column of response responses. Okay, so that's the first part of the decomposition. So now what is a main effect for temperature? Well, the way I like to think about this is what the main effect is, is the average of all of the values that are the same as the current values. I like to say it, I average everything that's like me on the level of temperature and then I subtract the grand mean. So I can do this in Excel 2010 by using the function average if. And what the average if command takes is a column of things to compare against. So that's going to be the column of factor levels for temperature. And now I'm going to hit F4 in order to make this an absolute reference, because I always want to be referencing this uh, column of the levels of the factor, sorry, the levels for temperature. And then I want to reach over and grab the level of temperature corresponding to this particular observation. So what's going to happen here is this function is going to read the value 3. It's going to say, oh, well, I'm the first observation. My level of temperature is 3, and now I'm going to go find everything in this column, B9 to B53, that's a 3, 
and then I'm going to average it. So the very last argument here is I have to tell you which column it's going to average things in. And that, of course, is just the response column. So I'm just going to go ahead and select the responses and then hit F4 again because I don't want that to change as I slide this formula down. So what I'm going to do now, what this average if does, is it's the average of everything that has the same level of the factor temperature as the current observations, averaging everything like me on temperature. And then to get the main effect, I need to subtract off the grand mean because what the main effect is trying to capture is how this level of temperature changes things from the grand mean. So I can see that at the high level of temperature, then on average I'm 1.02 units above the grand mean. So now I can just go ahead and copy that and then paste it all the way down. So similarly, the main effect for pressure is the same thing. I want to average everything that's like me on the pressure and then subtract the grand mean. So that's average if So uh, I firstly need the, to put in the column of things I'm comparing against. So that's all of the factor levels for pressure, and then hit F4. And then I need to grab the one that I'm comparing, the current one. This is the like me. okay? And then uh, I want that to change as I copy the formula down. And then I need to tell it what values, what column to select the values it's going to average. And that's just the column of Y's. And again, I need to hit F4 to make this an absolute reference. And then finally, I need to subtract the grand mean. So now what we see is that when pressure is in the high level, then on average, we're going to be 6.62 units above the grand mean. So let me just copy that all the way down through the column. So similarly, you can see that when you're at the low level of pressure, then um, you're going to be about 4.58 units below the grand mean. All right, so that's the two main effects. Uh, it's the average of, of everything like me on the effect that you're trying to calculate uh, minus the grand mean. Now, what about a two-way interaction? Well, a two-way interaction is the average of everything like me on both factors then subtracting out the two main effects and finally the grand mean. So it's the average of everything like me on both factors minus the fit in the model so far. Now to compute this two-way interaction, I need to be able to identify the cells that are, or rather the values that are like me on both the temperature and the pressure. And an easy way to do this is to create a cell code that's going to be unique for each of those combinations. So I can create this cell code just by concatenating the two um, levels for temperature and pressure. So I can concatenate this with the function concatenate, concatenate, and then I can grab the, the um, temperature factor level and then the pressure factor level. And so you can see that the cell code when temperature and pressure are at the highest level 3 is just 3,3. Three. And if I copy that all the way down, you can see that when temperature is at level 2 and pressure is at level 1, the cell code is 2,1. So now what I have is a unique code for all of the combinations of the levels of temperature and pressure. Now, to do my two-way interaction, then, it's going to be the average of everything like me on both temperature and pressure. And so what that's going to be is the average of uh, everything corresponding to these cell codes that match both levels. So here's how this works. I'm going to put in average if. And then I want the range I'm comparing with. So I'll select out the entire column of cell codes and then hit F4. 
and then which code am I comparing? Well, the one that corresponds to this observation. That's the like me. And then what am I averaging? Well, I'm just averaging the response variable. I better hit F4 again so that I can copy this formula down. Okay, so I've averaged everything that's like me on both temperature and pressure, and now I need to subtract the prior fit. So I'm going to subtract off the grand mean and the main effect for temperature and then the main effect for pressure. So what this interaction is showing you is how the mean of everything that is at the high level of temperature and pressure differs from what is predicted just by the grand mean plus the change due to the level of temperature plus the change due to the level of pressure. So when both temperature and pressure are high, the response on average is about 0.89 units lower than would be predicted just by looking at the effect of temperature changing by itself to that level of 3 and pressure changing by itself to the level of 3. So that's how this interaction captures the nonlinearity. So let me just go ahead and copy the interaction all the way down. So for example, we can see, just to interpret another one of these, uh, that when the temperature is at the high level and the pressure is at the low level, I'm sorry I misspoke, when the temperature is at the medium level of 2 and the pressure is at the low level of 1, then the response on average is going to be 2.44 units higher than is predicted by just looking at the grand mean and how it shifted by levels of factor temperature of 2 and then by uh, the level 1 of the factor pressure. Okay, so it comes out higher. All right, now this fit, which is the grand mean plus the main effect for temperature plus the main effect for pressure plus the interaction. If I add all of those together, I get a fitted value or a predicted value. So I'm just going to put in here it's the sum of the grand mean through the interaction. So I can see that this analysis of variance model predicts a response on average of 34.40 when temperature is at the highest level and pressure is at the highest level. So I can just now copy those fitted values all the way down through the table. The residual then is just the difference between the actual data value, which in this case is 39, minus the value predicted by the model. So you can see that in this particular case where temperature is high and pressure is high and Y came out to be 39, it's 4.6 units higher than what is predicted based on the grand mean, the two main effects, and the two-way interaction. So I can go ahead and copy that all the way down. Okay, so I've now done what I set out to do. I've taken every observation and I've decomposed it into a fit that consists of a grand mean, a main effect for the level of temperature, a main effect for the level of pressure, and a two-way interaction. And then I've taken this fit and subtracted it from the original data point to obtain a residual. So I've decomposed Y into fit plus residuals where fit has a special form of being a grand mean plus a main effect for temperature plus a main effect for pressure plus an interaction.